Good morning everyone. Um, it's yet again raining in Devon. We've had some really nice weather, um, but the last couple of weeks have just been wet and horrid. Yesterday was a nice day. I regret not mowing the lawn. But um, yeah, I've had two solid days finishing up the design work on my HA38s. And one of the reasons why I want to do this video is to go through all the measurements. Um, because that's not something I've really shown in any of the videos on my HA35s, the 36s, and now the finished um, 38s. Um, it's taken quite a long time to finish developing the bigger ones. Um, they do carry on from the HA36, which is basically the same speaker with a six and a half inch woofer whereas these have an 8 inch woofer um, and this is the speaker out of the range that I'm getting asked about the most and a lot of people I think are holding off purchasing them um, until they see measurements and also I've been trying to get um, reviews done of my HA35 and 36 which are completely finished um, they're selling fairly well considering I've not done any release on them or anything like that really um, so videos on those will be coming up with their measurements too um, <clears throat> yeah I've sent uh, Kelvin from Stereo Review X was kind enough to do a review on the uh, little 35s which he liked and I've sold a few of those off the back of the uh, that review. Um, he's also had my HA36s um, which I'm hoping he will publish his review on soon. I think he liked those quite a lot. Um, I've also sent them to a few other people which I was hoping to get reviews on and again the feedback has been phenomenal but that review is not out on YouTube and it's it gets expensive <coughs> posting these speakers out. Um, obviously I cover the cost of that. Um, the YouTuber gets some content for their channel and hopefully I get a good review. <laughs> and that gives them, um, that makes them, you know, credible. Uh, people then trust their sound. So uh, anyway, the HA38s. This is a finished prototype pair, the pair that I've been taking apart when I've been making crossover changes, putting them back together. So the front baffles are a bit rough and ready where they've been off and on, off and on. The cabinets aren't veneered, they're just 25mm um, raw MDF. Um, but they're finished. Um, and I will put up some photos um, of the HA35 and HA36 so you can see the veneered finishes and that sort of thing. These are going to be just the same, they're just bigger. Um, so these are the same size as a BC1, um, not as tall. So these are 60 centimeters by 30 by 30 centimeters. Um, 8 inch woofer, ported design, um, see as tweeter and Dynavox ribbon super tweeter and of all the speakers I've I've heard you know I hope you sort of appreciate over the years I've had so many speakers um, these by some margin are just the most enjoyable detailed listenable speakers that I think I've had and out of the range of the three the three five three six three eight these are the you know the, the flagship ones they are the, the bigger uh, the better and they are re really good 3.6 I love um, this just has more meat to it more base more body so anyway um, let's go through the measurements because I know um, this is something that I'm asked about a lot so first thing, first thing I'm going to do is put up um, the on-axis measurements um, reference and my preferred listening measurement. So I've talked a lot 
um, in my videos about the what's called the BBC dip. It's just ever so slightly recessing from about 800 hertz, um, smiley face, back up to about 4 kilohertz. That region is just where things can be a little hard sounding, vocals, um, that sort of thing. And I played around with that a lot, listening to the um, reference frequency response, which was the red line, and my preferred listening frequency response, which is the orange line. And there is nothing you can hear different in terms of the overall balance, but all that does is take out any harshness that might be there. That's all it's doing, otherwise it's, it's no different. And to create that little dip um, on the woofer circuit, it's one resistor value that changes, and on the tweeter circuit, the first cap on the third order filter just becomes slightly smaller. No difference at all. Um, I'm still undecided whether I will let them release them with the reference response or my preferred dip. Um, the other speakers have that dip and they've gone out that way. And the feedback from those has been fantastic. So that's probably what I'll do. Anyway, so if we look at the reference measurement, um, here is the on axis with the crossover points between the woofer and the tweeter super tweeter combination. So the crossover point is around 2000 hertz, which, you know, is, this is a large woofer, you don't want to play it up higher. Things like the BC1 play to about 3000, 3500 um, before they hand off to the, uh, the tweeter super tweeter, which I think is a bit high. And this tweeter, without compromising power handling at all, can play fairly low. These slopes are quite steep, because one of the things that's been very important is the intermodulation between these at the crossover point. So as one driver begins to roll off and the other rolls off and they should sum as a nice flat line, which they do, I mean these from, I can measure to 100 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz, but they're plus minus one and a half dB, you know, within a three dB band all the way along. They're so accurate, so easy to listen to. Um, yeah, they're lovely. So yeah, like I was saying, the intermodulation between the woofer and tweeters when you're at the crossover point is quite important um, because there is quite a, a portion of the frequency response where both drivers are doing the same thing, they're playing the same frequencies. And you're passing off from one driver to the other because ultimately one driver can do a certain part of the frequency range better than the other. Um, and you don't want it lagging behind or anything like that, which would smear the sound. So my crossover slopes are fairly steep. Um, I'm using uh, third order filters, 18 dB per octave. And that works well. The other thing, if, if the slopes are too steep, um, as an instrument is playing up in scale, you can get this phenomena where the instrument sort of jumps from one position of the speaker to another. Again, you don't want that. And these, they're just so well balanced across the drivers. They're, they're beautiful. Um, okay, let's look at their vertical performance. Now, one thing that I've spent so much time on is off-axis performance because that really kind of dictates how the speaker behaves in the room and also gives you a good listening window. I, I can't stand speakers that you just have to sit there in the middle of the speakers and then you get a lovely stereo image but no one else can enjoy them and I didn't want that at all. With these obviously the sweet spot is in the middle but you can sit on the left or the right of your sofa and there isn't much difference. I mean, I was listening last night completely to the right of the right speaker and 
the presentation is still good. You can stand up and walk around the room and not much changes and that's so important. That's so important. Otherwise you're battling with your speaker in your room trying to edge it here, edge it there to reduce a bass bump or boominess or something like that. These are easy to integrate into a room and that, that's something I've worked on. So here's the vertical measurement. So I'm uh, reference axis on axis is super tweeter. So I'm going up at one meter, 10 degrees, 20 degrees and 30 degrees. And really all that happens is from 10K as you would expect because the higher wavelengths are directional, the HF just drops off. So the vertical measurements are fantastic. <clears throat> right, same thing with the horizontal measurements. So um, again, I'm back on my reference super tweeter axis and I'm going 15 degrees, 30 degrees, and 35 degrees. And as you can see, not a lot changes. And one of the reasons the off axis is so good is because this small tweeter can play low. My crossover point is around two kilohertz. So the wavelengths have still got reasonable length to them. And being so small, I can keep the acoustic centers very close together. And that's what's allowing that to happen. Um, yeah, um, and here's quite an impressive measurement there. Um, cumulative spectral decay. So this is quite a telling measurement. Um, this is the measurement that will show up stored energy, ring in, um, that kind of thing, resonances, um, things that ultimately just distract you from the cleanness of the sound. And I spent a lot of time developing a form of panel dampening, which uses five mil dense neoprene rubber. The whole box is lined with that. And then 25 millimeter open cell foam is glued to that as well. And that makes the panel just, just dead. Um, and they're heavily constructed from 25 mil MDF. So they are um, a very dead box. And the spectral decay, um, yeah, I mean, the, by within a, a four millisecond window, everything's gone. Um, yeah, here's that measurement. Yeah, so measurements are one thing. Listening to these, um, it's just, I love it. Absolutely love it. Like I say, of all the speakers I've had, these have got to be the best. Um, just the, the detail, the clarity, um, how realistic instruments are, vocal presentation, it's just fantastic. They deal with bad recordings well, which is um, quite important. They have really good bass. The, the ports are tuned to around 40 hertz. Um, they dig down low. Um, yeah, it's the full picture. It really is. Um, female vocals, you know, when they're set up correctly, these have a, a beautiful image to them. You know, you can just not hear the speakers. Um, instrument placement, separation, because of the good quality components, um, you can just hear all the detail. The sound doesn't get mushy like it does with some speakers. It just becomes a noise. Um, Everything's there, either, even at higher volumes. Um, playing a lot of 80s electronic music and stuff like that, which I love. Uh, yeah, these just, just excel. Component quality. Um, I'm using good quality copper air core inductors throughout. No iron core, nothing like that. All the internal wiring is um, high purity copper, um, QED cable. The Super Tweeter circuit is using uh, quite a good quality Mundorf um, polypropylene in oil capacitor and the 
rest of the capacitors. Um, I started using Solon originally. Um, I've now moved to JB polypropylene capacitors. I just find they've got a little bit more clarity. Um, they're a little bit more expensive, but not much. Um, so I don't mind dissolving that into them. Absolutely fine. So yeah, JB polypropylene capacitors on the tweeter circuit and woofer circuit. Um, high quality MOX resistors. Everything is point to point soldered. So I don't use circuit boards for the crossovers. I um, fix everything to the back of the baffle and everything is point to point soldered. So the signal path is as clean as it can be. Um, one other thing I've um, done with these and will do with the range is every negative connection has its own home run to the binding posts. And I've just found that helps as well. So um, all the inductors, all the capacitors that are in shunt have their own negative lead. Um, same with the drivers as well. So nothing shared. That's kind of the importance, the important part of it. Um, I believe uh, Devor Fidelity do the same thing. And that's kind of where I got the idea from. And all these little improvements just, just add up. So anyway. These are done, they're gonna be available in a range of veneers, built to order. Um, because I'm moving quite a few of these speakers now, I've brought the price down a little bit. So I'm gonna be doing the little HA35 for 850, and that includes free UK shipping. Um, I can't ship these outside the UK. Um, I'm not at that point yet, uh, it's too risky. The larger HA36, will sell for um, 1450 again with shipping. These are going to be 2050 um, again with shipping. Um, I'm going to offer stands for them, purpose-built stands. I did have a guy lined up to make them too expensive, so I'll make them myself. These are just some temporary wooden stands I've made, but they will be like this. They'll be box-sectioned, steel, welded, sprayed black, um, and probably filled with rock wool to take out any ring in from the, um, from the metal. So yeah, there we go. Right, I'm going to stick some pictures in now. Um, if you're interested in a pair, drop me an email. I can send you all the information. Um, but yeah, I'm loving these, absolutely loving them. Um, years and years and years of doing this has kind of led me to this. <laughs> all right, take care.